Hey everybody, my name's Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Reviews. This is Banger TV's weekly heavy metal review show. Things have been really busy over here. Uh, my band Smolder is going on tour again from May 9th until May 26th. We have dates in Germany, France, Belgium, and the UK. You can visit the link in the video description, which is linktr.ee slash smolderdoom for uh, information on that. Beyond the uh, shameless self-promotion, let's get on to the real reason why you're here. This week, I am reviewing the third studio album from an extremely promising Dutch dark rock band who appears to be on the verge of international neutrality. That was the song Venus in Flames by Duel from their brand new studio album. It's called The Shape of Fluidity and it's out now via Prophecy Productions. Duel formed in 2015 with members of The Devil's Blood and Gold, and they are fronted by vocalist, guitarist, and Dutch media personality Raven von Dorst, who was a host on Drag Race Holland and a member of the electropunk outfit Ellie Bendita. The band released their debut Here Now, There Then, in 2017, great record, and followed it up in 2020 with this record, Summerland, which I picked as one of my favorite albums of 2020 for Cassette Cult. At the time, I mistakenly identified them in the video as being Swiss, but they're Dutch. The second studio album by Swiss. By Swiss. Turns out I make mistakes, shocking, I know. Uh, sorry, Duel. Anyhow, the band has experienced a few lineup changes throughout the years, but today they are comprised of vocalist and guitarist Raven Van Dorst, guitarist Nick Polak, guitarist Omar Iskander, bassist JB Van Der Waal, and drummer Vincent Crater, who recorded their third studio album, The Shape of Fluidity. Does it match or surpass the magnificent album, Summerland? Let's find out. I have really enjoyed hearing and seeing Duel's musical evolution. Um, their debut, this one right here, cemented them as a band to watch, courtesy of the gothic dark progressive rock styling, which to my ears combines, you know, Sisters of Mercy with Susie and the Banshees and The Devil's Blood and In Solitude, specifically the sound on their sister album. If you haven't heard um, Here Then, There Now, then I would recommend that you at least check out the track In Her Darkest Hour. Uh, that to me is the, the highlight. But on their second record, Duel really scaled the sound up. It features these absolutely huge repetitive choruses and very anthemic stylings. And a big reason why Duel's music is so powerful is due to the fact that front person Raven Van Dors is unapologetically exploring these deeply personal lyrical themes. So yeah, an artist who actually is saying something poignant about how they navigate the world, like that is an artist I'm gonna give a shit about. Here's the lyric video for the song uh, Hermagorgon, so you can see and hear it for yourself. I'm gonna read uh, a section of the press release um, that came with this record so you can understand more what Raven is singing about. Thematically, the album deals with the concept of identity in a world that is constantly in flux. How can we be true to ourselves when the world around us has such high and constraining expectations? It's a question everyone faces one way or another. On a more personal level, the lyrics deal with the story of lead singer Raven Van Dorst, who was born intersex and as an infant surgically forced to live their life as a girl. That was until deciding to take matters into their own hands a few years ago by reclaiming the space that was taken from them, changing their name, and finally becoming at peace with their hermaphroditic nature. These themes are materialized in The Shape of Fluidity, which is an album about finding oneself swimming up against the stream and facing the world head on. Accordingly, there is a lot of emotionally evocative themes here, and that's signified by every single piece of this record. The title, the album artwork, the music, the concept. We're gonna talk more about that in point two. I wanna talk more about the overall feel and theme of this record. 
The shape of fluidity has this an enveloping, heavily atmospheric effect. The album never, or the music in the album, never really diverges from itself. It flows and it morphs in this very subtle and extremely well-produced and consistent way. And while this way of writing music um, can often release or can often result in an album that feels kind of like boring or samey, in this case, it's utterly absorbing. Um, I don't think that it's at all a coincidence that the album title, The Shape of Fluidity, is a statement of intent. As in, fluidity doesn't have a shape. It's formless and ever-changing. And the ice cube on the album art also makes sense allegorically. As ice cubes melt, it's fluid that's forcibly shaped and once removed from whatever, where, whatever space that it was rigidly held, it returns to being formless. And this methodology of making your album title a declaration of the sound and themes within is a rare flex. And when it works properly for a band, it's really transformative. So when I think of declarative album titles that describe the album both sonically and thematically, I think of Epicus Dumicus Metallicus. Um, that is a statement and a de declaration of sound and an album title that matches what's within. I think of Pagan Altars, Mythical and Magical. That is a statement and is a declaration of sound. Riot, Thundersteel, exact same thing. Venom, Black Metal, exact same thing. Manowar, Battle Hymns, exact same thing. Griftguard, Solemn, Sacred, Severe, exact same thing. Isis, Oceanic, same thing. Typo Negative, Slow, Deep and Hard. These are albums that are saying something with their album titles, with their themes, with their sounds. And when you have this powerful synthesis, uh, it really brings the album up to a new level. <music> Duel is great at making anthemic sing-along tracks with repeating vocal lines and ample atmosphere building. And they do so frequently on The Shape of Fluidity. This isn't new to the band. So if you listen to songs like Golden Serpents or Sulphur and Starlight or Summerland or Dust and Shadow, which is my personal favorite song by the band so far, all of these feature the same with ample repeating sections that build in atmosphere and tension. This album around, you're treated to uh, the same effect on The Shape of Fluidity, you'll hear it on uh, Venus in Flames, which has sing-along choruses. So does The Shape of Fluidity. So does Evil in You. So does Hermagorgon. And in contrast to these powerful sing-along choruses, we're also being treated to morose and understated segments. The song that best uh, combines these sonic juxtapositions is House of a Thousand Dreams, which I think might be the best song on the album. It's a slow burner. At first, I didn't like it that much, and now I really love it. We're going to listen to a section of the intro first, which features layered textures, church bell, and sweet high singing courtesy of Raven. Okay, so for several more minutes, the song continues to build up heavier and heavier until it returns to the chorus and comes to an abrupt ending, which you'll hear now. The Shape of Fluidity is a contemplative, dark, depressive record, and it is an absolute triumph for Duel that completely synthesizes all the best elements of their sound. It's extremely well produced. It sounds great. It's got lots of sing-alongs. On album three, Duel has made their strongest record yet. For all those reasons, it's getting four and a half skulls out of five here on Overkill Reviews. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay. We're going to talk about um, my favorite albums from 2024 so far, and there are a handful. 
First up, here's one of the only trad metal bands in a hot minute who has truly excited me. They are called Noor and they are Canadian and their debut is called Mother's Guilty Pleasure Part 1. This is really coming out of the left field. It's spectacular power trad thrash with massive vocals. Recommended if you like Cauldron Bourne, Queensryche, Crimson Glory, but more aggressive and crunchy. Ignore the album cover. <laughs> I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's fine. The music rips. Next up, a big shout out to Norwegian weirdo technical death thrasher Sovereign, who released their debut Altered Realities earlier this year via Dark Descent Records, extremely consistent record label. If you put Nocturnus, Morbid Saint, and Voivod in a blender, you would maybe get something close to Sovereign. Goddamn, this album rules. Last but not least, the Mighty Eye Voidhanger released the debut full length by French Doom outfit Dionysiac earlier this year. Diagonos features absolutely manic, unorthodox doom metal. This is pure, true doom, like sans the repetition and sameness that perpetually plagues the genre. I know doom can be a hyper repetitive genre and this band goes off on a zag constantly and oh, it's great. What did you think of the new dual record? And which album would you say has a statement of intent about the songs within? Please give your examples in the comments. All right, that's it. Bye.